New Apple products released. New Apple products confirmed. I don't know if my head can take it. All right, guys, I'm back. What's up, Sam here? Welcome back to another video. Hope all of you are doing well today. Listen, we got a great show as always, talking about all kinds of new Apple products. Really, the full spectrum. Can we animate another rainbow? The full, look at this rainbow right here. Anyway, if you guys are excited, you know what to do. So what are you waiting for? If you're excited for today's video, drop a like down below. It seriously helps me and the channel out. And click that subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications so that you never miss a beat. And of course, guys, because it's Tuesday, there's a new episode of Genius Bar out. It is such a good episode this week. We go absolutely bonkers. So if you want to see some more casual tech talk between me and John Prosser and just about our lives, learn at the link down below. All right, want to start off by talking about what actually came out because I know we need to get that endorphin raise. We've been a bit low in the past couple weeks. And then we're going to talk about what's coming, what's been confirmed more specifically for Apple's September event. The only time we've gotten Apple hardware this year was in April. One month, we've seen hardware. I don't remember a year where we've ever seen this before, and it's very clearly because the pandemic has disrupted things. That's fine, let's keep people safe. Also, they've been doing these mini releases though, every two or three weeks, generally on a Tuesday, which is today. In the past, we've gotten some new Apple Watch bands or iPhone cases, most notably uh, the Apple MagSafe battery pack, which is actually a pretty good product. I, I've been enjoying mine and, and I actually think it's pretty neat. Which brings us to today where I think Apple's continuing that trend, but they're, they're getting closer because we've gotten some bigger accessory updates. First of all, some new stuff for Apple's Mac Pro. Now listen, I know a lot of you guys that are watching this are too poor to afford the Mac Pro, so you can just skip this part of the video. And by that, I mean, I'm too poor to afford the Mac Pro, but you know, you could just be Marquez Brownlee, who has literally 15 of these and Pro Display XDRs at his studio. I don't know how the guy does it. Congrats, Marquez, you're wild. Anyway, when Apple announced it, everybody was blown away that this was a modular Mac because modular and the Mac don't go together. You can't ever customize a Mac. They're very hard to repair. So when we heard about this, it was like, well, what's the catch? Well, really nothing because Apple released a number of modules with the Mac Pro, but we essentially dropped off. All of last year, pretty much nothing. All of this year, pretty much nothing. And until today, when we got some new AMD Radeon Pro options. So you can go on Apple's website and see what they're saucing out this time. There are three new options and they're all pretty pricey. First up is the Radium Pro 6800X MPX module. That's 2,800 bucks. A little bit more power will get you the Radeon Pro W6800X Duo MPX module. That's five grand. So it saves you a little bit of money rather than buying two of those separately. And finally, if you want to go all out for six grand, it's the W6900X. Now Apple's also released something a bit more accessible today, which are their new Magic accessories. So these shipped with the new iMac, the M1, they were exclusive. This is the more rounded keyboard with the lock button or touch ID, the slightly tweaked design-wise magic mouse with these color match strips on the bottom. And you would think Apple would release all the colors. We can get the colors. Keeps winning. Come on, tell me there's hope. No, there's not. There's no colors. Are you kidding me? Starting today, Apple now individually sells the new Magic Mouse, the new Magic Trackpad, and the Magic Keyboard with a lock button, and then the two Magic Keyboards with Touch ID, one with an additional numeric keypad. And they're all in white. Every single one. You can't even look at your screen. You gotta put sunglasses on to look at the Magic Accessories page because it's simply too bright. I mean, look at me. I'm, I'm pretty white. And this... I stand nothing to the page. Now you might look at this page and say three keyboards. Why are there three different magic keyboards? It's pretty confusing. There's one like this that just has the lock button. That's the one that I bought on my iMac because I didn't want to spend extra money. And then there's two more with Touch ID. This is compatible with all Macs. The others are only compatible with M1. That's because for some security mechanism, Apple needs the M1 chip to authenticate Touch ID. But if you have an M1 Mac Mini, an M1 MacBook Pro, an M1 MacBook Air, or even the new M1 iMac, you can add Touch ID to your computer through the keyboard now. And on top of that, Apple's throwing a braided lightning cable in here. All right, I wish they were sold separately. They're not, but yeah, technically, I mean, I don't know if any of you are super fans enough to do this, but you can pay 79 bucks for the mouse and you get a free free braided lightning cable on the inside. And I appreciate that for what you're paying for these, Apple has thrown in a nicer lightning cable rather than the standard one that used to come with the old accessories. So some minor updates for Magic accessories, but you could unlock some crazy cool Touch ID function for any M1 Mac if you want to now. All that stuff is out today. What about what's coming tomorrow? Well, not literally, but 
in the future, and by the future, I mean next month. Every year around this time, we get the same report. It shows what Apple's preparing to release, and it's always spot on. These products always end up coming out because what this report is, is a look into Apple's recent regulatory approvals in Russia. Super specific, super niche, and that's always how you know it's gonna be a juicy little leak. See, there's this regulatory entity in Russia called the Eurasian Economic Commission, and we call them the EEC for short, the EC. The EC always does a great job of accidentally revealing what Apple's up to. But anyway, this happens every year. This French website by the name of Consumac, who does a great job at obtaining these filings, shows us what Apple has just filed for sales and advertising approval for in Russia. Now, it's not just Russia. They're doing this in a lot of places, but it leaks out in Russia. And it just happened again. We just got a look at what Apple is about to release. And normally, we just see maybe like an iPad or two, Apple Watches and iPhones. This year, we've got some a little bit different. We got some new Apple Watch models, which is expected. We also got some new Mac models filed in August. Okay, so they filed Mac models in August. W what does that mean? Why are you bringing that up? Well, let's just take a look at what happened last year with the EEC. You see, in late August of 2020, that's when the EEC published filings about new Apple Watch and new iPad models. And what did we get directly in September? New Apple Watches and iPads. And then iPhones are always filed long, long in the past. That's no surprise. We know we're getting new iPhones every year. That's what we got in October. But then also in October, on the day the iPhone 12 was announced in 2020, Apple filed with the EC for new Mac models. And at the time we knew these were gonna be Apple Silicon, those came out in November. So what I'm saying is this. Last year, Apple filed the Apple Watch and the Mac models that were coming at different times because the watches and iPads came in September and the Macs came in November. That's a two month gap, they filed at two different times. This year it appears that they were filed at the same time, potentially lending credence to the fact that the new M1X MacBook Pros could be announced alongside not only the iPhone 13s, but also the new Apple Watches in September. That's a month away from three major new products. The fanboy in me is trying to escape my body. I gotta push him back in. All right, let's not get too excited here because obviously Apple could have filed these preemptively. I'm just saying this. Historically, as long as I've seen it, they always file the Apple Watches and the Macs at different times. Usually, unless they're coming around the same time. September event, iPhone, Apple Watch, and Mac. You guys may have heard it here first. This is confirmation that Apple is bringing out some new Mac models this year. Confirmation that Apple is bringing out new Apple Watches, but no mention of the iPads in these. So I wouldn't be super gung-ho on a new iPads coming. I'm surprised we haven't seen any filings yet. So iPad not technically confirmed yet. So with that, it is Apple season. I tweeted this the other day. Follow me on Twitter at iUpdate in case you haven't already. Listen, this is so absolutely exciting. We are here. We've made it through the drought and the fall is going to be absolutely bonkers. So drop a like if you enjoyed this video or learned something new. Hit subscribe so you're always staying up to date. I've been Sam. Hope you're doing well. Big hugs. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.